Welcome. We are live with Robbie Hayes from HTMB. I did it again, HNTV. <laughs> this is the Envirolocity Career Seekers interview series. There's also a blog series that you can find on the website. The two of them together are meant to give you all the information you need from real working professionals and advice on how to navigate your career search. And the interview series, we're just getting started. This is our fourth one. And the plan is to try to hit people from all types of industries so that you can get an idea if you have a, a career interest or you just want to work in climate change, what kind of what do those jobs look like? What do the people in those jobs look like? And what kind of advice do they have from their personal experience? So if you know um, a subject or an interest that you have that you would like to hear more about, feel free to email me or send a message, leave a comment here, and I'll do my best to get an interview in that subject area. So with that, I would like to introduce our guest, or actually I'll have him introduce himself. So Robbie, take it away. If you could tell us um, what your title is and then a little bit what that is. I don't think many people will really know. Sounds good. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for having me on this morning. Hello to everyone Thanks for being here. Yeah, no, really excited to, to have this conversation this morning. Again, my name is Robbie Hayes with HNTB. Uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, HNTB is a professional services firm that offers engineering, uh, consulting, planning consulting, and architecture, uh, primarily for transportation uh, projects and clients uh, throughout the U.S. So uh, again, my name's Robbie. I have a background in community and regional planning, uh, so urban planning background, also a public policy background. Uh, I currently serve as a project manager and practice lead uh, for HNTV in the environmental planning group, again, here in Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, that's sort of the title. Uh, I guess the question is, what is a practice lead or what does a practice right. lead do? So uh, a practice lead uh, helps lead a, a certain discipline uh, for this uh, instance, it would be environmental planning, uh, primarily doing uh, environmental documentation uh, in adherence to the National uh, Environmental Policy Act, uh, but also other state and federal uh, requirements uh, that are essentially uh, something that needs to be done uh, anytime we have a federally funded project or even a state funded project, depending on the state. So um, it is my responsibility to help grow our uh, presence here in Nashville. So that is interacting with clients, uh, working with them on various projects of scope and complexity. Uh, so uh, that's sort of what a practice lead is. Um, and so right now it's just myself, office of one, um, but uh, we will be growing soon. And so if there's anybody interested out there, if I could put in a shameless plug for h and <laughs> particularly the Nashville office, uh, we're, we're looking to grow our capabilities. Um, so that that's sort of, I guess, a, a quick intro of myself. Awesome. Um, Thank I, you for that. And I think uh, viewers might appreciate that shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me a little bit more about, you know, you mentioned when we talked earlier that you didn't really end up, this isn't where you planned to go. Um, so how did that change for you? Or at what point did you shift from the urban planning into this? Sure. And I'll actually take that a step a little bit further back. I was always interested in, in the environment and protecting the environment and uh, thought, you know, maybe the path is to go to law school and be an environmental lawyer or something of that nature. Uh, sort of serendipitously landed into uh, this uh, urban planning degree program um, and, and really was a passion of mine of how we grow and develop and sustain ourselves, um, not only on the development side itself, but also the preservation. And that's preservation of uh, cultures, natural resources, uh, just things like that. So uh, once I went through that program, and again, I also had a public policy background, so um, was also interested in, in, in policy and how things were being done, you know, not only in DC, but also uh, in, in states across the country. So uh, fast forward, finished graduate school, had a great opportunity to join the Atlanta Regional Commission which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Metro Atlanta. Um, so they're involved in a number of things, but uh, primarily helping communities grow. Uh, smart growth was sort of the, the, the 
flashy term at the time um, when I entered the profession. And so uh, it was just a great experience and a great opportunity to work at ARC, uh, working with how do we help land use and transportation uh, grow together and support each other. Um, and so obviously you start thinking about themes of growth, development, preservation, start to emerge and start to really take off there. Um, so from there, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, uh, where my wife is from, and we've been here for about 11 years. So started off here in Nashville, working at a local planning and zoning office, and then made some connections in the Nashville business community and uh, had an opportunity to join a consulting firm um, where I started learning more about environmental planning and it uh, was very much uh, preparing environmental documentation for the Tennessee Department of Transportation, uh, which would then get sent on to Federal Highway Administration for their review and approval. So I've been doing that for uh, well over 10 years now. Um, I have experiences in several different consulting firms, um, and again, most recently here at h and So uh, again, I wasn't quite honestly sure what environmental planning was, what NEPA was, uh, but I knew that, you know, I was passionate about, you know, giving back to the community and giving back to the environment and making sure that, you know, I could do everything that in my powers professionally and personally to sort of leave things in a better place than when I found it. Awesome. So you talked about a couple of transitions there. Uh, one of the things that people I talk to are really interested in is how they bridge that gap between, you know, when they get out of school, you're, you're not really 100 percent like just because you have the degree doesn't mean you're going to get the job. How, how do you recommend people, um, you know, you don't come out of college knowing how to write NEPA documents. Like how do they go about either showing confidence for that to get the interview or to get gain something on their resume that says I'm a worthy candidate, even though I haven't actually done this yet. Uh, great question, and and quite honestly, I would say I wasn't as prepared as I probably should have been in hindsight about getting myself ready for the professional workforce. Um, in graduate school, I was focused just getting through the program and more of an academic setting. Um, I didn't really have any professional internships while I was going through the graduate school. Um, again, more focused on the academic side. So uh, coming out, to be quite honest, it was a bit of a struggle um, trying to you know, break into the professional world. And so in hindsight, what I would recommend to myself and to others out there is uh, get involved with professional organizations. Again, another shameless plug here, the National mm -hmm. Association of Environmental Professionals is a great way to, to get involved. And Laura, you and I serve on the board of directors there and, and enjoyed working with you um, and, and getting to know many others throughout the country. But uh, they have opportunities uh, abound for students or new professionals or really anyone looking to you know, find out more about the profession or, you know, get their toehold in, into the profession itself. And so I would say that's that's one way and, and probably what I would recommend the best way is to get involved with professional organizations, uh, not only to showcase your talents, but also to learn from others. Um, and then, you know, most importantly, to, to make connections because networking is, is something that is huge. And I know that that you know, get said over and over again, but it's true. Um, and the connections are really kind of what helped me get my start and, and what has led me to, uh, I guess, move up professionally uh, on the professional ladder. So uh, I would say networking is huge. If it's something you're interested in, you know, maybe find something in your local community, uh, whether it's a, a local state organization, uh, find out where the professionals are and just reach out. Um, I think you'll be amazed at how supportive the community is, um, the environmental community is and helping each other out and, and looking out for each other and um, uh, really just finding champions who, you know, understand who you are and your passions and your beliefs and 
you know, it's, it's always nice to pick up the phone or shoot an email and ask questions about, hey, here's kind of what I'm thinking. Does this make sense? And uh, I've had so many people uh, throughout my career help me uh, along the way. It's just, you know, I can't thank them enough for, for what they've done. So really, I would say, you know, it, it's really on the, the student or the emerging professional. You're going to have to go out there and, and look for that, those opportunities yourself. But, but they are out there. Um, and again, presenting at conferences, uh, things like that um, are, are really a, a great opportunity to not only show your skills, but also uh, meet others and, and find out a little bit more, dig a little bit deeper into the profession. Excellent. All really good advice. Um, I do know that a lot of students that I um, talk to or career seekers, they will um, have been trying to reach out and then they don't hear anything back. So I think it's it's important too to recognize getting in touch with the right people, um, right. understanding how to look at their a person's LinkedIn page to see if they are actually active. Um, you know, if they have 20 um, connections, they probably don't use it very much. <laughs> if they don't have anything in their active post list, they probably don't get on it too much. So understanding when, you know, to contact someone via email or a phone call uh, might make a difference. In person is always the best. Um, and then, you know, we may network in creative ways and ways you never expected, like Robbie and I. <laughs> we <laughs> met right. in a very, very uh, circum... Uh, circular kind of a way like i was actually reaching out to a different robbie and accidentally invited him to do an interview and here we are <laughs> <So>. <laughs> exactly um, you, you never know where it's going to come from yeah. so you know explore all avenues get creative like you said social networking is huge uh particularly with linkedin and you know i find that at least for myself yeah, I still use that as, as a tool to get to know folks and, and make connections. And you'll really be amazed if you put in the effort to, to go out and make connections and just put yourself out there. Um, you'll, you'll really reap the rewards. That's great. And I'm glad that you said that because a lot another question I get often is, do I really need a LinkedIn page? And the answer is yes. <laughs> and yes. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it matters if you're just starting your career or you've been in your career for a long time. The opportunities expand when you're there. Absolutely. Um, and it's not just networking with individuals. It's finding out about the organizations, about topics. I mean, there's really so much involved that that you can really learn more than just making uh, a, a connection of someone you may or may not be able to meet uh, in person. But just, you know, uh, it, it really just expands your knowledge base. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk more about your your job um, for anybody who might be interested. Let's maybe talk about uh, what it is that you love about it. For a lot of people, it might sound a little bit dry to be a project manager. And um, but what what do you like about the work that you do? Well, what I like about environmental planning and what I like about NEPA is that it's just such a great opportunity to bring policy and science together. Um, and so. Because of that, it's always evolving. It's always changing. There's always something new and exciting. Um, it, it's certainly challenging. Uh, I always related to you know, trying to put the puzzle together, trying to explain what's happening, what's the history, what are the effects, what are the outcomes. And so to me, that's always challenging to be able to, to get out there and do that. But I, I really get excited by that um, and the opportunity to you know, solve problems. Um, and, and so that's sort of the environmental side. Project management um, is sort of this whole uh, other thing, you know, so it's for me, it was, okay, I want to take this a step further. I want to understand, you know, how do we grow as a business? How do we successfully deliver projects on time, on budget to our clients? How can we offer better services to our clients? And so the, the project management is something that, again, not a lot of background in, in school on that, but once you get into it and you have the opportunity to learn, and again, had some great mentors show me, uh, you know, key concepts and, and, and opportunities along the way. And it's just been a, a great experience, you know, really trying to understand how you solve the problems for the client, but also do it successfully as a business. And so um, that's really what project management is, is balancing all these other issues going on outside of the project work itself. So, um, so it's really almost two types of jobs kind of rolled up into one. Great. 
I always recommend project management as a skill for anyone in any field. The ability to effectively get things done is valuable anywhere. Absolutely. And just the understanding of how it works um, is good. So this isn't a, uh, necessarily a career where you definitely have to be a project manager. You can be a, a subject matter expert if you want to take a more technical track uh, approach. And there's a lot of uh, companies out there and organizations out there that are supportive of uh, folks who may not want to manage projects, may not want to manage people. They just want to focus on uh, the specialty, um, so the subject matter. And so there's opportunities there, but at least understanding the concepts of project management will, I think, make you a more successful professional. Good points. Um, along those same sorts of lines, when you first started versus now, like what sort of um, credentials or additional training have you kind of picked up along the way that's helped you? Well, the first was getting my uh, AICP certification. For those that don't know what that is, that's a American Planning Association has an American Institute of Certified Planners. Um, so it's sort of the professional designation that shows you've got the education and you've got the professional experience. You sit for the exam and then you get the certification. Um, and so planning has really evolved to include so many things that, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we're really just kind of scratching the surface. So environmental planning being one of those. And so uh, that was sort of the first foray for me is getting those skills. Um, beyond that, it was just looking for opportunities to get involved uh, professionally through that organizations. And again, I'm such a strong proponent for getting involved, not only in your day-to-day -day work or with the company or organization you're a part of, but also looking for professional organizations and, and seeing ways that you can get in there. So, um, you know, there's sort of this professional certification designation side, but it's also really just getting in there working hard, uh, delivering, uh, and, and doing what you say you're going to do. And I think you'll begin to build those skills. You'll build your, con your competency, excuse me, um, as well as, you know, other types of skills that, you know, just kind of come along the way with experience. So, you know, I think for some folks, it may be frustrating, you know, coming right out of the gate. You're this all-star in graduate school or undergraduate, and you're ready to just hit the ground running. You're super passionate, and it's good to use that energy to just soak up as much as you can. But it's also important to remember that you're not going to be an expert right out the gate. Um, and so there's a lot of people in the field that have the same credentials and qualifications as, as you have. So, you know, patience is certainly something that, you know, uh, more of a soft skill that I think is, is something that's very important, especially for new folks that come out. And again, that's not to say, don't be excited, don't have the passion, don't have the energy. That's not what I'm saying, but I guess what I am trying to say is, you know, you also have to put in the work and let the process work. Yep, I'd agree. I think a lot of people are ready to just hit the ground running, like you said, and then they get frustrated because, you know, there's some paperwork involved and some learning some skills they didn't really plan for. Um, but, it, you know, the job has got more things than just doing the fun stuff. <laughs> exactly. And, and I've learned so many different skills, uh, kind of picking up your previous question, um, you know, GIS, uh, things like that, understanding historic reports, understanding uh, noise and air quality models and analyses. And again, it just kind of comes along. So if you have a good a, a good champion, a good mentor that you can reach out. And that doesn't necessarily have to be your direct report. Um, but, you know, typically that can come from someone like that who's got experience in the field and just sitting down and putting the time into to understanding. And you're probably not going to get it the first time, but as you keep working and keep working and keep working, then you understand. I, I sort of jokingly say I've done it wrong so many times uh, that, you know, I finally learned how to do things right. And, and I'm always learning. And it's again, it's a field that's constantly evolving and growing. Um, so that's exciting for me personally, because there's always something else to do. There's always that opportunity to grow. Yeah, that's great. One of my favorite quotes is, um, if you haven't failed, you're not trying hard enough. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> it work out the first time, or if the job that you get the first time isn't what you want or doesn't work out, or, you know, the internship doesn't turn into full time, uh, another door will open if you keep trying. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. That's yeah. a very good point. That's fun. I guess <laughs> I would say, you know, if, if let's throw out a hypothetical, what, what I do differently, um, 
I, I don't know that I would do anything differently because I think, again, this was sort of serendipity. You know, I just kind of fell into this um, not knowing. And so I think maybe part of that um, allowed me to be a little bit more flexible with what I was doing. So, you know, coming out of school, I was like, yeah, I think I want to be a planner. What does that mean? Well, I, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's academic, maybe it's professional setting, but you know, hey, I'm, I'm from the Atlanta area originally, and uh, the the MPO is a great opportunity for me. So you get in there and you learn this whole other world of things that I had not previously been exposed to. And so that flexibility allowed me to, to move around in my career and, again, more exposure to different things. And so uh, I, I guess I wouldn't do anything differently because I'm not sure that I could – you know, predict where I would be now. So kind of having this, you know, I have a general idea of what I like and what I don't like, but I also want to be flexible because there's a lot of things I don't know. And there's still a lot of things I don't know. Um, so it's always important to kind of be open-minded and understand that you may not be able to see long-term uh, where you're going to be. Um, so there's going to be opportunities that pop up and, you know, if it's something you're excited, go after it, you know, just, you know, be excited, show the passion. And I really think that that's, um, that shows and, and, and that's really going to help you out in your career. Awesome. Perfect. Um, I think that touches on a little bit of what I was thinking um, for some final advice. So I appreciate that. And I like to end our interviews with some lightning round questions. So I just say two things and you will just pick one intuitively. Okay. okay. <laughs> So, um, biking or hiking? Hiking. Uh, surf or swim? Swim. Europe or Asia? Europe. That could be the bands or the continents. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with the continents. <laughs> <laughs> so is that Europe or Asia? I missed it. Europe. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. And recycle or repurpose? Repurpose. That's my favorite. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Robbie. I appreciate it. It's all really good advice. Um, I, I assume, but let's ask you if it's okay if people who've watched this would like to reach out to you to ask you more questions if they're interested in your background or have any questions, they could reach out on LinkedIn. Um, I will, if you're okay with it, provide your contact information. Absolutely. No. And I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today. And for those out there listening or watching, uh, thanks for tuning in. I think what Laura's doing is a great thing. I wish this was available or at least known to me when I was uh, in graduate school and looking, you know, for some some advice. So, again, thank you for what you do. And uh, I think this is just a great tool for those who are looking to have some advice or learn a little bit more. So thanks a lot. Awesome. And thank you. We do need people who are passionate about the environment and willing to do the tough sort of from the office type of work often, you know, and um, make change happen with, as you said, combining science and policy together. So thank you for what you do. And for those of you tuning in, uh, this is a series again that will be published on YouTube. So if you subscribe, you will get notification when the next ones are available. These will mostly be delivered at the same time, 11 o'clock on Thursdays when they are scheduled. And um, you can also join the, the mailing list. The There are a lot of free resources on the website. So anything you wanna learn about your job search, you can always feel free to reach out or connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So with that, we will let Robbie get back to work and the rest of you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks everyone.